So, girls, make sure you like that video and smash that subscribe button. And ring that bell if you want to be notified of future content. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Uh, we shot a couple of trains already, but this will be the intro anyway. Uh, got this train here, went by with some uh, doors open on it. Jacob called in, told them about it. They stopped at here summit, had the rapid responder, shoot some, uh, had the rapid responder, go close the doors. And so just now getting on the move, what timing? Got this one coming over uh, our shoulder here. So anyway, this is gonna be Jacob's last time with us probably. train of the day come through Woodford and Jacob standing there this is where he wanted to come catch his train the train was already at rolling as we approached as we were pulling up so and I finally figured out the trick to making the zoom work better only took me about nine months after having this phone that long. And up there, see that locomotive parked in the house track up there? He's getting ready to pass. That locomotive caught on fire the other day. It was a helper on the end of a train. It caught on fire, from what I understand, but Jacob was telling me that it started three fires between here and Caliente coming up the hill. They stopped it up at Waylong at the loop where the fire department could actually get to it. Someone called it in, stopped it up there. They put it out, drug it back down here and parked it. little history of Woodford that I did some time back one of my earlier videos and uh, a couple of videos I've mentioned it since that little spot right there is where the Woodford Depot once stood which is why they referred to this track here originally as the house track as it served the depot the uh, maintenance away and signal uh, houses right there the signal maintainer had a house down here when there was when back in the days of section games section houses were right there where that little retaining wall is I don't remember when they signaled this uh, siding here but there used to be a cantilever bridge up there and it was signaled coming in and leaving controlled by a dispatcher at a power switch and when I came up here in 1984 that stuff was all still here. The other end of the siding, the short siding, was up there. Just barely see the freeway bridge up there. See the truck going across it there. And uh, that's where the other end of the uh, other end of the siding was when I came up here. Almost immediately after I got here. They brought a gang up and they removed the signals and switch from the other end and pulled the rails up back about, well, to where they are now, I don't know, about three or 400 yards of rail that they took up. And now this is just a storage track. For those of you who saw my uh, video about the uh, rail grinding train, if you haven't seen that, you should go back and find it. It's really awesome. Shot at night. But this is where they had the the rail grinder part while it was working up here. 
and this is where I shot the opening segments of that where I was talking to the crew and watching them prepare the grinding train for a night of work. And Ashley Stratford loves getting all the locomotive numbers so she can see if these are locomotives she's already seen before so Ashley there's a few for you all right see what happens next it's this guy here be sticking his nose around the corner another BNSF imagine that <laughs> Those of you who saw the uh, piece I did on changing the damaged M23 switch machine, this is where we did that. Right here at Rowan. nice day today. I don't know what the temperature is supposed to be up in this area. It's going to be warm. It's supposed to be 92 in Bakersfield. So won't be much cooler than that at this point, but Tatch B probably won't be in the low 80s. But anyway, 92 is no big deal. That's almost sweater weather compared to what it's been like. Rowan is another very scenic place. It's not as uh, accessible as Woodford. But it does have some really cool scenery. It's kind of like Woodford. Uh, kind of a different looking uh, background every time you go around a curve. Deb Jacob will be headed back. He is from Wisconsin and will be headed back next week, I think he said. And he asked me if I'd take him out one more time. See some trains in some unusual places. steps right here. The reason they're here is because I am standing about where the signal cabin used to be. It used to sit right there. Kind of like uh, the old west end of Waylong went down in the hole and they had the old wooden steps, but 
these ones are metal, so they didn't have to take these ones out. They were spaced uh, more, uh, more commonly, I guess you would say. The old wood steps at Waylong were very close together, and, and in my opinion, were were dangerous. I never fell going down. I don't know if anybody ever did, but I it was kind of worse going up. Get the toe of your boot stuck under the next step up. They were rickety and I never liked using them. auto racks appear to be empty. Alright, moved up here to just this uh, east of the bridge at the East Switch Ron. Second crossing of Tehachapi Creek. corner curve I'm sorry and uh, wind around behind La Paz or Caesar's Palace as sometimes called and then into the west end of Woodford to someone in the know and this is going to be the last train for quite some time it is about 11 30 in the morning and nothing headed up onto the mountain for at least a couple of hours so jacob asked if i would be amenable amenable to heading out onto the lone pine branch so we're going to go over to mojave and see if the Lone Pine is putting its train together and maybe go out there and check that out. I know I've shot videos out on the branch before, but as I said, it'll be Jacob probably the last time Jacob gets to come out here with me anyway for some time. So we'll see what he wants to do and that's what we'll do. Like I told him, I can come out here and shoot these other places anytime. So. We'll see what happens after this guy. That building that you see back there by that tall tree was the church for the uh, Stony Brook Retreat, when that was still a tuberculosis sanatorium, and uh, I believe it's a I believe it's a school now. I could be 
I could be wrong about that. I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe it's just more offices for uh, for the UFW. I'm not sure. Do you know me? I love to speculate. Over the desert, see what's going on there. All right, we saw these trains one of them at West Rowan, the other at East Rowan. That train had some four different containers open. Jacob gave them a call, told them about it, so they stopped them at Summit, brought the rapid responder out to close those doors, and ran uh, this train here that's going by is the one we saw at uh, East Rowan by the bridge. Ran him around him, running him around that train. The last information I have is there was still nothing cleared out of Mojave, so they'll probably just run this guy all the way to Mojave. On the number two track that he's on. Not worried they could cross him over at Cameron. No, they can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't remember. Can't remember which way Cameron was. It's been too long. headed down towards monolith out there all right let's see what happens next all right down here at Warren this is one of the trains we caught at Rowan and Summit over into there. And for those of you who have seen my uh, dirt bike riding with my grandson, this is the area where we were riding. Out in there, across those hills that way, you can go right down there, going to Cash Creek is right there cross under the freeway and these are designated off-highway vehicle roads, trails, and they go out that way and all the way to Jawbone Canyon, California City. Little community of Cash Creek there. It's, it's not incorporated, so it's not a real town or anything. It doesn't have city limits or any of that. It's just a little community. I've had friends that have lived out there. You see that tree up there? That's where the actual train order and telegraph station of Warren was. It was built in, I think, 1916 is when they created that station. And they got rid of it in, I believe, 1944. When turbines there in the background, those things are good size too. I don't know how tall they are. I don't know how big those blades are. 
but they're big, and when you stand next to them, they make a lot of noise. Have to excuse me, I'm smacking on a Tootsie Pop. Go around the big curve there and head down into Mojave, which is where we are headed. Got this guy with the Mojave Yard going out. And this guy coming into the yard. Cool little meat. Saw him coming in. And uh catch the Lone Pine today, but uh, Lone Pine's not going out today. They ran a uh, talk to the uh, MOP or MRO or whatever his title is, and uh, he said that they already left out on the pine and just went to Camaro, uh, which is a, a plant just outside of town and already back, so we missed all that. But just as we were leaving the yard, we saw the headlight out of Fleeta caught this guy. Now that BNSF going by on the other track there is one of the ones. That is the second one that we caught at. We caught it at Rowan and again at Summit and again at that's the one that was stopped at Summit. Just close the doors. Then we caught it again at, uh, at Warren. I just took some stills of it. Jacob shot a video and we caught it again so another time when we saw the same train a whole bunch of times in one day but I thought that uh, catching this local coming into the yard would be pretty cool and that's what uh, Jacob was thinking as well so that's what we did The Mojave interlocking is where the BNSF and the UP split is right up there under that bridge. You, for those of you who saw the video I shot from there some time back, I think I caught seven trains under there that day. But he will hook to the left under the bridge and go out onto the BNSF to Barstow. And this guy came in from the UP, which can which continues straight south. This one, you can see that train going around into the yard. And we did find out though that the Lone Pine goes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Jacob has asked if I will come out here Tuesday. I'm not sure if I can make it. If I can, I will. And we'll do another pine video then.
that uh, roof you see there over the top of the train, that is a quintessential Airbnb. You can uh, get yourself a little place to stay there. I understand it's uh, relatively inexpensive. It's on what is called Burton's, Burton's Curve or Barton's Curve. I can't remember now. But, uh, yeah. Quinn's a nice, or Kirk is, a, Kirk Quinn, who owns it, is a nice guy. Met him a few times. That is about where the head end is, about where the former west end of Marcel was before they turned all this into double track. I was telling Jacob, I shot a really cool video last spring up on top of that hill, caught a meet here with a westbound on the uh, number two track here and an eastbound coming through the tunnel, but it was so incredibly windy. And I had a mic on with the dead cat and everything, but it was just, it was so windy, you couldn't hear anything but the wind. It was terrible. I went to edit the video and try to knock the sound down, but it was just, it was such a terrible audio quality. I just deleted the whole thing. I was really frustrated. So maybe I'll get up there again sometime when I'm feeling energetic. See if I can't catch another meet. One of the cool things from up there too is you can you kind of looking down on the Tehachapi Loop from up there, so you get to catch the train coming up. It was really a cool video, but I get enough complaints about my audio, so I didn't even want to try that one. You guys would have been throwing virtual rocks at me, and I tend to agree to agree with Jacob about intermodals. They are very very boring. At least some of the container trains have different colored containers. But uh, manifests are always more interesting. Different loads, different colors, whatever. All right. All right. This could be the last video I shoot today. Let me do some stills. Jacob wants to catch another train up here somewhere. Eastbound BNSF Manifest. Coming out of Tunnel 9 into Waylong. And notice if you look over there, you can see. So he's coming out of Woodford and cross the fifth crossing of Tehachapi Creek and uh, noticed just a minute ago that there looked to be, what did you think, four or five helpers? Yeah, four. So you get a lot of power on the train. I mentioned in the last uh, segment that they had track and time on the number two track and that is why we have some welders up there head in there and the back of the train is still coming around the uh, 180 on the approach to Waylong.
getting ready to cross over itself just as the uh, middle helpers are coming out of the tunnel not a lot of smoke I'm sure Jacob's disappointed that's a pretty cool shot there back looks like it's just idling. Looks more like it has a pot belly stove in it than an engine. <laughs> crack myself up. Starting to get into that afternoon sun condition. It's about four in the afternoon. It's going by just about where the old east end of Waylong was. Back beyond where that uh, Manzanita bush is there. Before this all became double track. You know, I, some more unit numbers for Ashley. I said her name was Ashley Stratford, but that may not be Ashley's last name. It's her mother's uh, last name. So what do I know? I'll call and ask next time I'll know for sure. And if I got it wrong, sorry, Ash. You can see the cut when they made this double track rather than, woo! Uh, rather than punching another tunnel, I just excavated the side of that uh, mountain out. There comes the tail end of the train out of the tunnel. Maybe we'll get a little excitement out of this.
on like either of the last two units are pulling. Overlook is just over the little side of that hill on the other side of the train. Jacob mentioned that it looked like the train had picked up speed, and I have to agree with him. Looks like it sped up a little bit. If it got out of the loop, maybe I don't know. But you know me, I love to speculate. Well, that will conclude the day of chasing trains again with Jacob up here on the mountain and out in the desert a little bit. Got another one coming up behind us. I think Jacob was going to shoot that, but I'm going to just do some stills. And this video is already going to be like 137 and a half minutes long, so I'm going to have to do some editing when I get home. But anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget to check out. Uh, Jacob's channel, Jacob Pfeiffer, and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and don't forget to keep dropping me the ideas in the comments below, shoot me an email at motorpoet59 at gmail.com and we will see you all later.